Welcome to the Hidden Driveway Show. I'm your host, Amu, and then joining me today is a very special guest, Ghosty, if you'd like to introduce yourself. Hello, I am Ghosty. Uh, I'm rapper, producer, mainly on SoundCloud. I got shit on streaming, right? Mm -hmm. uh, great friends with uh, such notable artists as, like, Exo Philo and Hate Oryx and all my friends shout out all my friends on god and i would just like to apologize this has been very long overdue because you actually asked for this like two years ago when i was doing my other interview <laughs> thing but you know I, th yeah this is long overdue thank you for having me on here yeah and then just so this is a little secret between you and me but the people can know now we tried recording this an hour ago and the audio just wouldn't <laughs> work so what we're gonna do for this interview is all the audio is going to be panned to the left and then duplicated and pushed over to the right side. Cause... Yeah, because there's just random ass crackling in the right ear. Yeah. So we <laughs> just have to... This has taken way too long to set up, but you know what? Fuck that. We're here now. We're doing this. We're, we're fucking unstoppable. We're here, bruh. You know what I'm saying? Listen, even Google couldn't help us, but we're here. Even Reddit couldn't help us. That's when you know you're fucked. To get us started, is there anything that you'd like to talk about? Is there anything that's on your mind right now that's not related to the yes. stupid, shitty audio crackling? <laughs> yes, actually. I was uh, I was talking about this, I think it was last night or the night before with friends. But I was like, yo, bears are fucking scary. Like, I th we all know that, but if you really sit down and think about it, bears are fucking terrifying. Like... There are bears you can fucking, like, shoot, and they'll be like, you know what, fuck you, and they'll just kill you. Them... <laughs> bears are so fucking terrifying because they're strong. They're so fucking strong. Like, if you get hit, like, I was telling this, like, they're like, oh, I bears are so cute, I want to hug one. And I'm like, bears, if, if they could hug you, you would die. What if Th they're them chill, though? Shits... <laughs> them shits can climb trees with their hind legs do you know how much have you seen how big a bear is do you know how heavy a bear is how much upper body strength does it take to climb a fucking tree with that build that is like crazy you do not want to fuck with bears they will kill you and they have claws bro people forget that they have j big ass claws them <laughs> they'll kill you bro they're scary what about We Bear Bears? We Bear Bears? Uh, I, that show is goaded. I don't care. I, I know there's people that are like, man, mid-ass show. Fuck you. We Bear Bears is fucking goaded, alright? I remember, uh... <laughs> well, why was he called Ice Bear? Because he's the, like, and not the polar just, like, bear. not just, like, polar bear. I remember, I forgot what, which episode it was. Like, but I was like, man, I miss We, we Bear Bears. What's been, what have they been up to? And there was an episode where they were in like a cave and there was like a bat character and the bat character started rapping and like wait a minute young ma <laughs> young ma who fucking voices a bat in we bear bears that's awesome. I'm like holy shit that's awesome isn't that how like tyler's in like regular show for the one episode tyler and childish game yeah you know, fucking it... love both of them. i love it when just like random ass people uh are just like in cartoons it's like like, there's just a character, and then they open their mouth, and like, holy shit, I recognize that person. And then you, like, like figure out who it is, and it's like, oh, it's fucking that person. Because, uh, uh, another thing, uh, I remember, I was also talking with one of my friends uh, about Phineas and Ferb last night, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, there's an episode where, it's like a flash-forward episode where, like, Phineas and Ferb, are in like middle school but that's not the focus it's dr doofenshmirtz is like a science teacher oh the tiny bug that episode. middle school uh yeah no no the, the bug episode yeah that's exactly what i'm talking about the fucking purple bug I, uh napoleon i think his <laughs> name is he's voiced by jk simmons <laughs> and i did not know that until like yesterday and i'm like holy shit the funny spider-man news guy is the bug from phineas and Ferb. that's so sick <laughs> I forgot, is it like Donald Glover also like Marshall Lee? Yes, he is. In like in the in Adventure Time and Fiona and Cake, he's Marshall Lee. I heard Fiona and Cake was like like the actual show was bad from what my friend told me, but 
I've heard like different opinions. I've on heard it. the complete opposite. I've not watched it, uh, for personal reasons. Multi, uh, spoilers. But do you care about spoilers actually? For Fiona and Cake, no. Okay, well, from what I've heard, uh, w- okay, what it sounds cool is it's like Adventure Time, but like you know, it's made for the modern audience of Adventure Time, aka you know people that have grown up since mm-hmm. then. It is way more mature. However, right, I, I do like that, but. I do not like that it is a multiverses show, which I'm a very, I'm, I'm, I do not like multiverses show. I feel like the, the trope is played out and th- there's too much of it, right? And especially with Marvel doing it, like, I'm, I'm sick of it. It's like, oh, what if there was the, there's a hero. Oh, but in another, u- another universe, he's the hero, but evil. Ooh, the, the, I'm the Flash. I'm the fastest man alive. I'm a, the Reverse Flash, and I'm even faster. <laughs> Ooh, like shut up! I don't care. Like that's so like it's such a tacky way to introduce like like I don't I don't like it. I don't I don't like it. Mm-hmm. Like I don't care if anyone else like it per, likes it personally. It's not for me. But uh, like. Fiona and Cake is heavy with multiverse theory, Mm -hmm. which, or not multiverse theory, just like the multiverse's tropes, but I, so that's why I don't watch it, but from what I've heard, everyone says it's incredible, like, everyone says it's really good, especially, uh, Ash, she's, like, been raving about this show, she was always like, bro, we need to watch it, I'm like, I don't wanna watch it, I don't, and she's like, and then I explained to her why, and she's like, that's lame. And I'm like, you know what? That is lame, but hey, wait, I, it's still on. a reason. Important question. Do you hate, like, Spider-Verse, then? Uh, I, okay. Spider-Verse does it well. I said the p- trope is very played out for a lot of things. That's where it works. I really fuck with that. Okay. I really fuck with the, the multiverses with Spider-Man. Because they have fun with it, right? Like, they, they're not just, like... Actually, I was going to say, they're not just like, oh, I'm Spider-Man, but evil. But, spoiler alert for the second one, uh, that happens. <laughs> but, I don't know. Maybe they do it well. I'm going to have to see in the third movie when it comes out. But, you know, up until that point, like, they've done it really well. They've had, like, a lot of fun with it. They had fucking Spider-Ham. They've had, like, fucking noir Spider-Man. They've had the anime spot. Like, I fuck with all that, because they're having, like... Mm-hmm. I can tell they're having so much fun with some of the characters. Like, they're just, like, doing it because it's, it's, it's fun. Like, yeah, I, I like the... That. I like the Lego Spider-Man just because it was some, like, 14-year-old kid that oh, made, yeah! like, a fan-made, like, thing, and I they put it in the movie. I the Lego Spider-Man. Yeah, that's really cool that they, like, put that in the movie. Moving on to my first actual question. So, oh, all right. you've been making music for several years now under multiple different aliases, and I've been aware of you since around, like, 2020 or so. So, it's been really cool Ooh. watching you evolve since then. So, yes, I was wondering, you. what do you think you've, like, improved the most on since you started making music? Ooh, that, that's a really good question, honestly. Uh, okay. I'm, a, like, I, there's a bunch of things, but the main one, probably production, right? And I think that's a given uh, saying, because, you know... I went from Audacity, which not being able to produce any of my own stuff on there. I mean, you can, but you're a psychopath, and I respect you heavy if you can actually do that. And then I, the GarageBand on my iPhone, which it's GarageBand on my iPhone. I'm like essentially like Dr. Giggle Touch with that shit, you know? And then, <laughs> then I actually got to FL, and I just didn't touch producing in fl because i'm like man i can't produce for shit i'm just not gonna and then uh over the years i i've like delved into making my own beats but especially recently i've been self-producing a lot for myself because i finally know like what kind of stuff i want to make because for a long time i made beats and i thought they were good beats i just didn't know what to do over them or I, i i like didn't like you know like, other people thought they were good, but I'm like, oh, this is all right. Mm-hmm. But I finally have learned or, like, I've taught myself how to make beats that I both want to use and know what to do over. And I'm very proud of that fact. Like, it's taken me a long time to do that, but 
like probably longer than it should have, but hey, I, I got there in the end, and that's what matters. Yeah, I was listening to your. So, admittedly, I hadn't listened to your like new like goatee stuff yet. I listened to your like Scott stuff, and then comparing that to now, you sound so much more just like comfortable and like natural on what you're doing. I think. Oh yeah, I definitely am. <laughs> Cause here's okay. With uh, with my old shit, I could just like, oh, uh, I'll, I'm gonna go through servers and look for beats, or I'm just gonna like ask my friends, like, yo, y'all got any beats you can send me? And there'd be shit that's like, ooh, this is so fire, and then I just make a song over it and drop it, which isn't bad. There's a lot of people that do that, and like, that's a good way to make music. Thing is, right? Uh, I like with uh with my new shit, I've wanted to prove myself because a lot of people, uh. I don't know, they kind of, like, stopped listening to me after a while, because, you know, I was just kind of doing the same old stuff, right? I was just, like, you know, my shit wasn't good enough for me to just, like, you know, do stuff over beats and have people listen to it, right? Like, there's, I, I said before, there's people that can do that, but they're fucking amazing at it. But with me, I wanted to prove myself that I'm, like, more of an artist than that. So, I got to, like, you know learning how to self-produce, learning how to craft my own songs from scratch, not just, like, with, like, no outside help, right? And that's caused me, like, to put a lot more care and precision into, like, what I make because I'm putting all this effort into doing what I'm doing. Uh, it has to, like, like, the more effort I put into something, the more I feel it needs to, like, pay off in the end. Like, if I just, like, you know, take a free-for-profit beat on YouTube... And, like, you know, do some in, like, an hour. Like, if I make a song in an hour, I'm like, okay, this is a cool song. I can drop it. People will like it. But it won't hold too much value. I know, once again, not dissing anyone that, like, makes songs really quickly. Because I respect the hell out of y'all, right? It's just with me, I can't do that anymore. Because I need to, like, I just need to put as much care as possible into my work. Because... I'm finally expressing myself how I want to. Like, I was expressing myself before, right? But now, like, I've finally learned how to do it correctly. Like, I've done all the mistakes you can make when, like, you know, making music, you know. Like, all this stupid shit, like, buying features and, you know, like, trying to be like, Yo, guys! Like, trying to promote in fucking comments, right? Mm -hmm. It... Don't do that. Like, I learned from all my mistakes doing that. I, I finally know what I'm doing, and now I can use those, like, skills and that wisdom I've learned to actually put myself ahead and do, you know, the correct thing I need to do. And it's working. I've been doing... I've been dropping shit under Ghosty for six months now, and I have several songs that are over a thousand plays, and I, I barely have a hundred followers as of the recording of this. And I'm proud of that. Like, I, I know what I'm doing. I know what I want to do. And that's made me incredibly happy. It's, like, really self-fulfilling, like, to actually get that done. Yeah, that's awesome. I, I saw the one when you had with Philo. Is that, like, it's either, like, 2K or, like, almost 3K streams, I think. It's almost at 3K. It might be. Like, it will definitely be at 3K by the time this episode releases. But that song is so... F there's, pe uh, there's people that have made edits to that. That's never happened. Oh, I saw to me that before. in your story. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, let that, let seeing that, because Morgan sent it to me, right? And like, they're like, yo, there, there's someone made an edit with the song, and I'm like, holy shit, that's crazy. I'm like, so happy. I don't even know what the edit is of. Like, I don't know any of the characters or any of that shit in it. But like, it, it looks hard, so it gets my seal of approval. Mm -hmm. So, while well, you've had several aliases over the years, Music as Ghosty is a lot, like, spookier and dark-sounding. So, I was wondering, yes. have you ever had a paranormal or generally, like, unexplainable, like, experience happen to you? Uh, ooh. <laughs> That's also a really good question. Um, kind of? Personally? Okay. It's weird, because I don't want to really get into, like, like, a lot of, like, spirituality and, like... Mm -hmm religion and stuff but i personally i don't like my idea of like ghosts and spirits is like very weird right but a lot of like the stuff that 
uh, my music is inspired by is a lot of my nightmares, right? Because ever since I was young, I've had chronic nightmares. And I've never gotten checked to see why. It's probably something undiagnosed, which I, I should get soon, you know? <laughs> this shit still plagues me. But I get these horrible, horrible nightmares, and I've just had no way to deal with them, right, for a long time. Like, I've told people about it, and they're like, oh, man, that sucks. Hopefully you don't have a nightmare tonight. And I'm like, thanks, man. Right. <laughs> but... Uh, a way I like to do that, I talk a lot about sleep and, you know, scary things and, like, torture in my songs, which is, you know, derived directly from my nightmares. Mm -hmm. And th those have, like, my music doing that has really helped me deal with, like, you know, expressing how these nightmares affect me and shit. Like, there, th uh, there's some things I have had nightmares about I cannot share on this podcast mm -hmm. for you know uh, like reasons but it's some horrible horrible stuff right and i express the I, I express a lot of that in my music and i don't know if it's because of like a ghost or spirit or not i like to think not to because i don't like thinking about that kind of stuff but like hey like that's just how i deal with it and a lot of people seem to really like it so i'm really happy that you know my suffering can bring <laughs> happiness to other people <laughs> would you put it like that so, <laughs> sorry i didn't mean for this to be dark i i <laughs> well, i guess i should have thought about sorry. when i asked that question like where that could have gone but i don't know i guess i'll tell you what my answer to that is because it's like kind of related to what you talked about but when, like, I've had, like, relatives pass away, and I've had oh. really, like, vivid dreams where they're, like, talking to me about their deaths the same night that they died. And it's, like, I'm not really just like that, really, mm -hmm. but something about that just makes you feel like there has to be something, because it feels really real. Yeah. That, yeah, that, that's... Yeah. <laughs> like, it happened both Sorry. times, and then when my, um... So, like, both of my grandmas have passed away, and when the second one died, like, I'm making the moment I found it, I felt, like, two sets of arms, like, hugging me, and I felt really warm, and there was nobody, like, around me. Aww. So, in my head, that's just, like, oh, that's them. But, like, there's nothing to, like, prove that, obviously, but that's just, like, yeah. there's nothing else that can, like, be to me. I don't know if this is, like, the same thing, right? But there's been, uh, there's been situations where, like... I'm going to, like, do something or go somewhere, right? And just something inside of me just tells me don't do it. Like, just... Or I feel, like, this overwhelming, like, urge to stop that, right? Mm -hmm. And it's, like, it's different from, like, my conscious because it's, like... It felt like something external. Like, something, like, that was actually, like, something else that was stopping me, right? And I, I've listened every time, like... I, if you feel something, it's probably for a reason. Mm -hmm. And, oh, okay, there was one where I was going to uh, go to uh, Six Flags with some of my friends, right? Mm -hmm. Except I was scared of heights. And, oh, wait, okay, sorry. I'm, I'm thinking of more examples. I was scared of heights. And, uh, you know, uh, I, I wanted to go because all my friends were there, right? But there was just a part of me that's like, you're scared of heights. Don't. And, well, like, not some of the part of me, but something telling me. And I'm like, you know, I I'm not going to go. And I don't know what it was, but that, that Six Flags, like, closed early because of some shit that happened. And I forget what ha what it was. I just remember that, like, they're like, oh, the Six Flags closed early. And I'm like, wait, why? And they're like, I don't know. It just happened. So that's good. Given the spooky nature of your aesthetic, this begs an important question. What was your favorite Halloween costume that you had as a kid? Ooh, okay. Honestly, okay, I've had many Halloween costumes throughout the years, right? Uh, I rem like so one day I remember one time I was like a zombie because I didn't know what it was, but that's not that's not my favorite, right? Mm -hmm. The most creative one is like when I was six, right? And I was really into marine biology and like you know the ocean and just, just nature as a whole but especially marine biology right and i remember 
vividly. Like my parents asking me, Halloween's coming up. What do you want to be? And I'm like, a horseshoe crab. (laughs) And so I was a horseshoe crab. (laughs) That's awesome. I went for Halloween. I went as a horseshoe crab when I was six. Right. The best part was the year after that and the year after that, I also went as a horseshoe crab. Three years in a row, I was horseshoe crab for Halloween. Dude, that's so hard. <laughs> I, I don't have any pictures of the costume, but it was honestly a really good costume. Mm-hmm. Like, it's like the whole shell thing was, like, on the back and stuff. And, like, like there was, like, little arms. Oh, it was so... <laughs> It was so adorable. I fucking love that costume. Like, but I was six. I can't fit into it anymore. Do you think there's an age where it's, like, too old to go trick-or-treating or maybe just, like, to dress up for Halloween? Uh, okay. I want to say no, but there is an age where it does get creepy. Mm-hmm. Like, if you're, like, 35 going around trick-or-treating, that, that's that's a little weird. Like, you can do what you want. Just, like... <laughs> Honestly, okay, I, I, I just said this, but my heart wants to say no, right? Because you can do whatever you want. You can, you, I'm, you should be able to dress up and go around to people's houses and get candy because that's awesome, right? But the reality is that it can't, it can't be that way. Uh, I'd say a lot of people say like when you're like, 13 or 16 which they're crazy i like it's 18 right like like when you're 18 you can either stop or do your last trick-or-treating right Mm -hmm. but that's like that that's where i draw the line but once again i i wish you didn't need to do that like i understand why and i get why but like it it shouldn't be that way yeah how like trick-or-treating is so fucking fun i wish i could do it again yeah the last time i went when i when i was uh, whoa the last time I went was when I was 13, um, but I hadn't dressed up again until, like, Halloween weekend is a really big thing, like, at my college, so Ooh. I dressed up for that. The, my, my costume was, like, I don't know, because, do you know the show Victorious? Uh, I know of it. I never watched it growing up. Okay, I didn't, I didn't watch it either, but everyone always tells me I look like one of the characters from it, so... <laughs> oh, shit! <laughs> you do! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so... I got like a. I bought socks from Target, and I made a sock puppet to be like the puppet he has, and then I bought a white shirt and it's real like Victorious with a sharpie on it, and I watched her out like that for the night. <laughs> like everyone knew who I was, That's which awesome. is awesome. So yeah, I didn't go trick or treating, but actually, okay. So technically, we didn't even like go to any parties either because my friend group that I was with didn't have a game plan, so we kind of just walked around and like we were at a, like an apartment party for like maybe ten minutes. I thought that was, yeah. like, the spot for the night. But then they all left to go to, like... I don't know, there was some, like, frat party that was happening, like, right next to it. So me and all my guy friends were already, like, Because all of the, like, our, like, girl friends, like, got in for free. And then we got up to the front of the line, and it was 40 bucks. So everyone walked oh my out. Lord. I'm not paying that much for a frat party. But yeah, I think I was out until maybe, like... I want to say maybe, like, 1 a.m. or something, but I didn't go to, like, any parties the whole night. It was just walking around, like, the street. Yeah. 40 bucks is insane, though, bro. Especially if you're at like, a frat party, like... It, like, okay, there's definitely people that pay to that to get in. And I'm like, you could have bought a Super Smash Bros. for the 3DS with that money. Like, exactly the same amount. Oh, what was the... Oh, Smash Run. Did you get your Smash Run? Yes, I love Smash Run. I, I grew up with Smash Bros., Like, that game is so fucking fun. Like, Smash Bros. is one of my favorite games, but it's, like, weird because I don't like any other fighting games. That's why I feel like I mean, Smash Bros. is more of a party game, if anything. But, like, you know, it, it, like, it is definitely, like, the biggest, like, fighting game in the world. Like, pro, like, you could debate that. But, like, really think about it. Okay, like, in terms of scope, yeah, but in terms of, like, tournaments. Well, actually, I guess there's also no, like... Because, like, everyone knows the Wombo combo. And I feel like Street Fighter doesn't have, like, an equivalent. <laughs> Happy feet. <laughs> Wombo <laughs> combo. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> Fucking love that video. <laughs> so you might have a point with that. Because I really can't think of any other, like, fighting game, like, quote, 
like that. Yeah. All right, you like. I mean, there's like the... Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat that are like bigger names, but like the the player base for Smash Bros is just so much broader. Yeah. Than that, because because anyone can play it, right? Like even if you don't know what the fuck you're doing and you have just a ton of shit items on, and there's a stage that's constantly changing every fucking two minutes, right? Like. You you can still have fun just from the chaos that the game delivers. Who's your main? <laughs> My main? <laughs> okay, I've had so many mains throughout the years, right? In Brawl, I mained everyone. Like, I literally learned how to play all the characters well, right? Uh, I will say some way better than others, but, like, you know, like, I, like, because... I only I grew up with only a Wii. I never had any other video game console growing up until I bought a Switch myself, mm -hmm. right? But like I was fucking like I was locked in on trying to like master every every character in Brawl, right? But main if I had to give a top 3 main characters that I've like mained like just throughout, it number 1 has got to be Mewtwo. Second Mr. Game and Watch, third Rob, those three my goats. No, I fucking so love playing all those characters. Yes, no, okay, no one mains Rob, and that's why I like him, right? Because I can like learn how to play Rob well, and people are like, people don't suspect anyone to main Rob, so they're not prepared to fight what I have, right? The same with Mr. Game and Watch. Mr. Game and Watch is a funky character, and it's really hard to like learn how to fight. Or, like, not... I mean, I guess you can, but, like, who's gonna sit there and, like, okay, I need a counter strategy for Mr. Game and Watch. Or, like, or Rob. Plus, like, if you get nine, it's over. Hell yeah. Yeah, you're gonna hate mine. I, I go with Ness, usually. Ness is fine. Ness is fun to play with. I mean, his recovery is shit, but, like, other than that, he's great. Because I get flame whenever I tell people. Like, do you think because they think I just, like, spam PK fire the whole time? That's Lucas that has the annoying PK fire. Actually, both of their PK fires are fucking annoying. But, like, I still respect that. Like, that's fire. No pun intended. Oh. So, you like to use Sadie from Steven Universe as your profile picture on your socials, you know, including Discord, as we can see here. Yes. And as someone that grew up watching this show, um, what's your favorite episode? <laughs> you can't make me choose, bruh. Uh, also, you're the first person to recognize that it is Sadie Miller from really? Stevie Universe. Everyone thinks it's like my own character. I'm like, no, it's just Sadie Killer and the suspects. Like, I don't know. I don't. I don't have a lot of friends that watch Stevie Universe though. But, uh, oh, favorite episode. That that's always a hard one because there's so many good ones, and I'm probably going to answer this question and then remember a new one later and be like. Well, you could say, like, like multiple say if that? there's, like, something coming to mind. There's so many. <laughs> I'm sorry. Steaming Universe is, like, my favorite show ever. It's like... Oh, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm gushing over <laughs> this show too much. But um, a really, really, really good one is uh, the one where Peridot and Lapis are trying to, like, live in the barn together, but Lapis still doesn't like Peridot, so, like, she tries to, like like reconcile with her and shit that one's really good i really like that one i really like just both of those characters okay honestly i'm gonna get so flamed for this lapis and peridot carry that show i don't care both of them are such good characters and i love both of them to death like I, I'm, I'm sorry but they're they're the goats the show did lapis so dirty though because they made her go to like the moon for like like a whole season right uh, I think so. Oh yeah, she did. Okay, they they had her fly away, but then she came back, and then actually I forget the series of events that it happened. Actually, no, she did come back, and then she fused with Jasper, and then she held Jasper captive at the bottom of the ocean for like years and shit. I think. Wait, no. I don't know if it was years, but it was a long ass time, and like. She had, like, trauma from that. No, because I think the Malachite stuff, because it was that and then, like, the boat episode where they're, like, fishing or something. 
That one is so good! I love that one! <laughs> like, they brought Lapis out into the water to, like, help her, like, get over, like, her fear of, you know, water. Like, I, f I forgot what it's called. It's, like, it's something therapy. Uh, psh, 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 oh, that sounds psh. right, yeah. Exposure therapy, that's what it's called. Yeah, they brought her out on the boat as a form of exposure therapy. And I thought it was really cool. And my favorite part is when they were fishing. I, I love fishing. Shout out fishing. <laughs> Did you like Steven Universe Future? Because I've always been kind of eh. Yes, I that. love Steven Universe Fe Future. I think, okay, a lot of people don't like it. I think it's like, I think it's perfect for like, okay, people say it's a spinoff. I, I guess it is, but it's kind of, like, perfect, like, for a sequel, I would say, after, like, the main series has finished. But I, like, I think it, like, wraps up a lot of things and, like, explains a lot of things that are, like, you know, left untouched. Mm -hmm. And I really fuck with that. I especially, like, um, like, just, like, them trying to get, like, all, like, the all the gems to, like, get do hobbies. I thought that was really funny. Like, I really, I don't know. It's funny to, like, I don't know what trope it is, but, like, like te like a character that is, like, very unfamiliar with, like, earthly things and trying to teach them, like, you know, stuff that is, like, normal to us, that's incredibly entertaining to me. Mm -hmm. Like, I really fuck with that. And especially in that context, because, like, they ended up just, like, making a garden or something, which is incredible. Oh, wait, you know that episode where I think it's, like, Paradox, she was about rain? Yes, I love that one too. I was ex I was thinking of that one exactly. That one, ooh, mm, that's a, sorry. That's another one of my favorite. That honestly, that might be my favorite episode now that I'm remembering it. I love the part where she was freaking out over thunder. That shit's hilarious. <laughs> like I don't know. Like the, that episode also has just such a comforting vibe to it. It's like I I, I fucking love that show. Just the whole show is incredible. I love it. Yeah, I was so into it in middle school. Like, I would come home, and then I'd watch the newest episode uploaded to YouTube in, like, six different parts. Like, yes! Like, with the filter on same. it. <laughs> Bro, I watched, like, there was, like, a fucking, like, channel on YouTube. I forget what it was called. It's, like, it was Crystal something. I think it was Crystal Universe? I don't remember, but the channel was taken down for obvious reasons. Mm -hmm. But the entire channel was just... Each episode of Steven Universe, but each episode is in 14 different parts, and I watched that shit like that. Oh, uh, wasn't there, like, I know, like, didn't the whole special week, like, like, week, like, a week early one time? Uh, I don't remember. It was the Human Zoo one. Oh, that one? The, yeah. Oh, the Human Zoo episode is so, I'm gonna be saying this a lot, Is like, blank episode is so good. I'm gonna be saying that a lot, because, like, I fucking loved it. I told I said this before. Like there's too many episodes. I can't choose a favorite. There's so many really good ones. Yeah, I remember there was like for the it's the one where I forgot where they went. It, I think it was to the Diamond Planet or something. But it's supposed like with Steven uh, and Lars together. Yeah, Homeworld, yeah. yeah, home world, yeah. But there was this story is so insane. I had to like double check that it was real, but there was a kid that was like it was a make a wish kid and they asked to see the episode before they died. And then they leaked it to the internet. <laughs> like, the whole plot. Wow, that is crazy. <laughs> if you forgot, like, the make wait, like, wait, the wait, make -a -wish wait. Uh, Sorry, my brain just registered that. The Make-A-Wish kid leaked the whole plot? Yes! That's fucking insane. <laughs> <laughs> like, they got special permission to see it early. And then they just told everyone what happened. <laughs> <laughs> that is some goat tier <laughs> shit. That's like... That is, like, the funniest thing you can do. I respect the hell out of whoever that is, man. So Shout out them. Rest in peace, probably, but shout out to them. Cause like, yeah. yeah. Shout out Make-A-Wish for even allowing that to happen. Meeting online friends in real life is always an interesting experience, and I know you've met up with artists like Crystal Ash, Who is Jordan, and Jake Quinn Drive, just to name a few. So, what surprised you the most about meeting them in person? Or, like, what was different than you thought it would be? Less of what was different and more of how similar, just like, like, I like, okay, sorry, I'm stuttering a lot. <laughs> I, have a, I have a problem with it too, you're okay. Yeah, but uh, more of how well we got along in person, just like more than normal, mm -hmm. right? 
uh, like, cause here's the thing, like, obviously, like, you're friends if you, like, call them all the time, right? Like, obviously, that, that's what being friends is, I'm being stupid, right? But, like, I thought, like, shit was gonna be different, like, meeting up with my online friends and then seeing them in real life. No, it's, at least for me, right, cause it might not be the same for everyone, but at least for me, that shit was, like, it was, like, you know, like, VCing with them and, like, talking to them, like, online. Like, it was like that, but in person, and it just elevated, like, just th how much we, like, we got along. Like, I don't know. Like, like we'd bounce off of each other more. I'm talking, like, generally, just, like, for all of them, right? Especially, like, when I met up with Kate Dash. Like, that trip was, like, fucking insane, right? For most of the trip, we just, like, hung around, like, her house for, like, a week. But it was incredible. Like, the, the vibes were immaculate. We, like, did some, like, stupid-ass freestyles in her room, right? Like, we went and got, like, uh, we got, what was it called? Fuck, it was so good. What was it called? Uh, Skyline Chili. Skyline Chili. So, it's, it's just spaghetti, but instead of spaghetti sauce, it's chili. And it's, like, the most genius thing ever. And, like, I can confidently say, like... The moments of me finally being able to meet up with, like, you know, friends I've known, like, over the internet for, like, years, and then finally being within, like, the same mile as them, right? It's fucking incredible, and, like, some of, like, the best experiences I've ever had, like, ever in my life, like, at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I finally got- okay, so technically, for me, it's happened twice, um, but the first time, I don't really count, because when I was, like- you know what Scratch is, right? Uh, the thing- the coding thing? Yeah, with the cat, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know what Scratch so, is. There was a summer camp I went to, and there was a guy there that I became friends with. And Scratch was my whole life at that point, so I couldn't stop talking about it. He also used it, we realized that we, like, followed each other on there. Yo, that's awesome! And, like, he was talking about, like, people I knew, and it was just so weird, because I never expected to hear those names, like, said in real life, but- I never got his actual, like, contact info, though, so he's just, like... And then he got banned off Scratch, so I haven't talked to him, like, ever no! since. No! <laughs> no! So, like, he's out there somewhere, but I don't know. I don't know where. And then last month, I got to meet him. Entropy Service, who's a good friend of mine. He came Ooh. to... Like, he stayed in my dorm for, like, five days, which is cool. But hey. I think I didn't anticipate the fact that we'd have to be together, like, 24-7 for five days. Because, like, like, after yeah. I... Like, he used to, like, go, but I think we were both kind of done with each other, like, by the end of it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> nah, I get that. Yeah, it was still really cool, though. I think the main thing was just he was a lot taller than he thought I thought he'd be, but I'm also kind of short, so. Oh, yeah. Everyone I've met up with has, like, been the opposite of how, like, tall or short they'd be, right? Ash is fucking tall, right? For the longest time, she's like, oh, I'm six foot four. And I'm like, no, you're fucking not. Met up with her in real life. She's definitely six foot four. I can assure you. <laughs> that, and then on the contrary, I met up with Kate Dash, and she is so much shorter than I thought she would be. Like, I think she's like 5'9", but like, I didn't think about that. But like, I don't know, I could see the top of her forehead when I, like she was walking in front of me. Oh, I'm 5'6", so I'm going to be like... Oh. <laughs> I thought you were like 5'10", 5'11", no. if I had to like guess before, but like, damn. Maybe it's the camera angle. Yeah. Bro, J-Coin Drive is taller than you. <laughs> and we make fun of him for being short because he's 5'7". I mean, listen, I wear, I wear platform shoes, so I'm like technically 5'7". Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Because, like, I don't know, one of my friends told me that I didn't seem that short, and they took my shoes off, and they are like, oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't care about it. It's silly. It is weird, though, because, like, at my high school, I was, like, kind of average height, because everyone in my area is, like, short. It's so, like, I could see over, like, half the people's heads in the hallways, but, like, where I go to school now, like, everyone is huge. Everyone is giants, yeah. Yeah, like, I went to a concert for, like, one of the first times recently. Right? It was, like, a few months ago, but... Everyone there had to have been, like, six feet tall. So my friends kept having to, like, re like rearrange me so I could see. It didn't get to that point, but, like, if they had given me, like, a piggyback ride, like, that would have helped a lot, I think. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Look, okay, I'm gonna be real. I, <laughs> I am, like, I tell people this and they don't believe me. I'm six foot, like, perfectly. And 
people are like, no, you're not. I'm like, I'm liter I literally am. Or at least last time I measured myself, or I was measured, right? Mm -hmm. But, like, people's like people don't believe me that I'm like six foot perfectly, but but I am, and I hate it because I don't want to be tall. I, I've I've said this before, but my ideal height is five two. Five like, that's two. That's such a good. Yeah, I want to be five two. That's such a good height to be at. I want to be five two, but unfortunately, I was cursed with this stupid man body. With ten so extra now inches. I have to be. Yeah, I I have to be fucking six foot. The perfect height here though is five foot, like on the dot, because you see this like pool noodle thing that I have here. Yeah. So it's because, so like my setup is under my bed, and uh huh. I I bang my head against this a lot, and I have a friend who she's exactly five foot tall, so she stands like right here, and she can't hit her head on anything. Yo, <laughs> that's awesome. I was, I was wondering what that was. I, didn't know, <laughs> I, I wasn't going to ask because I didn't want to be rude, but, like, <laughs> yeah, that explains it. You know, it's really helpful, though. Yeah. I'm going to take a water break. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone uh, watching this, drink water right now. You are dehydrated and you need to drink water. Unless you're already drinking water, then good for you. Take another sip, I guess. Um, on your song Zip Zaps Do with Pan McKnight, the beat features way more experimental production than you usually go with. So I was wondering, do you think that's the direction you're gonna go with, like more in the future, or is that like a one-off thing? Or, like, I guess like uh, how your productions like. I over certainly, time. yes, I certainly would love to go in that direction. The problem is those kinds of like beats like that that are that experimental are so hard to make and they take so much time, right? And, uh. I really like that shit is like the shit I want to do like eventually obviously it's not exclusively what I want to do but I definitely will make more stuff in like that in the future it just won't be very common because I said before that that took a long time to make like that that beat has four different producers including me like on it mm -hmm. it's uh it's me Hayden Kate Dash and Saint Ghost. And Saint Ghost did like the main like glitchy loop. Uh, I did like all the other drums for my half. And then when it gets to like the ambient pop section, that's all Kate. And then after that is like literally the rest of the song is just Payton. Well, other than the loop because he, he samples it. But like, bro, Payton is such a goat, bro. Shout out Payton. Shout out Island Collective. Like, shout out all of them. Like, Payton been like my friend for like years now like uh he I've had friends that have been like I've known for like way longer than Payton but like Payton is definitely like one of my closest friends and we be making a lot of shit together and we have a lot of shit planned also mm -hmm. which I'm really excited for so be on the lookout for that y'all yeah that's super exciting um <laughs> so, <laughs> so I was wondering, what's your favorite kind of music to make, like, strictly just, like, for, like, fun? I, I guess, like, that's not, like, the right word to use, because obviously, like, all your stuff's for fun, but, like, yeah. you're really, like, stupid stuff. Like, what's, what's your, like, go-to yeah. thing? I love to just, okay, I love taking, like, popular instrumentals of songs and then just absolutely shitting on them. Like, just doing the worst freestyles, like with the worst mixing mm -hmm. just possible so people think it's like oh i'm about to listen to fucking uh look at me now by chris brown and then it's like these like these vocals that are like out of tune and like way lower quality like the bit rate is all the way down <laughs> and i'm just saying the stupidest shit it's awesome <laughs> Yeah, Feral Feast songs are also really fun to sample. Like, I know it didn't Ash do, like, a birthday present for you that sampled, like, Let's Go Home or something? Yes, she did. Because I like, uh, I do a thing where I do uh, birthday songs for my friends, right? Like, I'll just make a stupid-ass birthday song, either, like, you know, making fun of them or rapping over, like, the instrumental of a song they love mm -hmm. or, like, an artist they like. And, like, I, it's like a tradition. Like, I've been doing it. Like, I've been... uh i've been doing happy birthday i used to make happy birthday albums for my friends right but 
th that took way too long to make. Like, making a whole album for someone, right? That, that, that takes a lot of fucking work. Yeah. Right? And especially with me, like, more people noticing, hey, you do the birthday stuff, can I get some? Right? I, I can't provide everyone with a whole ass album. That's just not. Yeah. I, I can't. <laughs> That's so sweet, though. Yeah. I usually do All match right. of rock, paper, scissors in, in these videos. And I beat Doomsday, who was the last person I had on here. So, I guess what you have to do is, like, type your, like, move in the chat, and I'll just close my eyes and do mine, and then we'll just, like, see how it goes. Yes, I got that. I'll, I, I, I'm I sorry, I do not have a camera. I said that before. I don't think, actually, I don't know if I said it on this recording, but I do not have a camera. Like, just, I physically do not have one. That isn't, like, just, like, my phone camera. And I'm not trying to, like, turn my phone around and, like, try doing, like, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, it's okay. Rock, paper, Rock, scissors, paper, scissors shoot. shoot. Oh, okay. Dang it. All right, so she did paper, so I'm up one. And then, all right. Rock, paper, paper scissors, scissors, shoot. Shoot. Okay, we tied Tie. up. We both did rock. Rock, right. paper, scissors, shoot. Shoot. Oh, let's go. Damn it, fuck. <laughs> Okay, so I'm the worst at rock paper scissors. I was fearing this segment. <laughs> no, it's so. I think it's funny because I can like power scale like everyone I've had on now, because there's been <laughs> so overall. No, I'm bad at rock paper scissors. Uh, there's been two winners and, no. then, and then three losers. Oh, am I one of them? You're one of the. You're not. You're you're not a loser, but you did lose. Damn. See, I'm, I'm worried though because I don't want to get to a point where like if like if I go on a losing streak with these. Like, I have to come back, and I don't know how bad it's going to get. So I got to stay on top of it. Nah, you know what? I gave you the win. Don't don't, don't fret. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I got you, man. <laughs> Alright, because it was I like, totally I, I was tied with, like... I actually lose. I was tied before, but, like, now I'm up one. Let's go. Uh, so you're currently based in Kansas, but I know you moved from Connecticut originally. So, like, if there's anywhere you could go, like, in the world, where would you go? Uh, yes, I grew up in Connecticut. I wasn't born there, but I was raised there. If I could go anywhere. Ooh, okay, in the world or in the U.S.? Just like anywhere. Those are two it, anywhere? Oh, I'm not going to lie. It would probably have to be Germany. Like, I love Germany, right? And I want to move to Germany just eventually in the future. Not anytime soon, right? Because that's going to take a while. But, um, like, when I'm, like, in my 30s, I want to, like, move to Germany. Because Germany's fucking lit. I also have ancestry from there, which is cool. And I'm, like, I just have, like, a deep connection with, like, like Germanic culture and, like, all that. And I really fuck with it a lot. Is there any, like, any German activities you'd want to do? German activities? <laughs> I don't know what they have over there. <laughs> I mean, uh, it's not. It's more of like European uh, stuff. Like, cause okay, like the the countries in Europe are vastly different. Like they're incredibly different. Like, mm -hmm. like you have fucking Spain, France, uh, the UK, uh, Netherlands, Germany, like Switzerland. All of them. Th like, I don't think any of them like speak the same language no, I, no they don't <laughs> but a lot of like european cult like there's a lot of shared factors in european culture and i really do fuck with that but i just like there's a lot of great i'm not sure if this counts as an answer but there's a lot of great german artists in like over there like, that I l would love to work with. And just a lot of music from Germany is incredible. And I would love to, like, work with those people and work in, like, those studios and work with, like, other, like, you know, Germanic people, mm -hmm. like, that do that kind of stuff. Obviously, far into the future, because I'm not anywhere near being able to move to Germany. I don't, I don't know how to speak German yet. I've been learning, but I'm very much not fluent in it at all. Do you, like, Duolingo or something? <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, I was trying that with Hebrew for a little... Okay, not even trying, because I'm Jewish, right? And I can read Hebrew, but I can't, like, speak mm-hmm. it. And I have a friend that's from Israel, and she always sends me, like, songs that are in Hebrew. And I wanted to know what they were saying, but after, like, a day of trying with Duolingo, I just gave up. So you're a lot stronger than I am. Uh, uh let me see. What day am I on? I think I'm on uh, day 87. That's pretty good. 84. I mean, uh, today will be day 85 when I do it. But yeah, I know how to. I know how to say like simple sentences like "What is the mouse?" That just means "Where is the mouse?" German, like learning German, is a lot similar to English. I've learned, right? And I know like English is a Germanic language, but like I really like didn't think about that until I actually started learning it. Like, there's some words that are just exactly the same or like very similar. Like, father in German is Vater, right? Which is just father, but with a German accent. <laughs> Mother is Mutter. Uh, I'm, I'm probably butchering the pronunciation. I'm, I'm going to get better, though. Trust me, y'all. Right? But there's, like, I don't know. It's incredibly similar to English, and just learning it has been... I, I don't want to say easy, because it is getting harder, but, like... You know, getting into it really has been easy, and I'm really determined to, you know, eventually master this language, or at least, like, you know, become fluent. You've been involved in other collectives before, but now you're part of the Island Collective, alongside other members, like, am I saying this right? 3MG? Is that how you say MG. That? Shout out MG, they the go. Okay, uh, and Aesthetica. So, how is being part of this group been different than maybe, like, other collectives you've been part of in the past? Because I think the Island Collective is a lot more, like, together if that makes sense oh yeah uh first off shout out jcoin drive for owning the collective and Payton for you know co-owning it right but it really is uh the island is really like all jake like he's the one that like made the server it wasn't even like a collective server in the first place like it was just like a server he made for it like him and his friends including me and shit right but he always wanted to like own a collective and like, like here's the thing. Me and Peyton are, like, very, uh, like, we go around and, like, look for people to join. Like, usually I find a lot of them through, like, Instagram promo. That's how I found Asidica, Uh is I showed I showed Asidica to Peyton and Jake after I got them on, on my Instagram feed from a promo. And I'm like, you know what? This is pretty good. Let me, let me send this to them and th- see what they think. They loved Asidica. Actually... I'm be real. Uh, they, I don't remember if I'm re- remembering this correctly, but they, uh, like they thought Asidica was cool. Like they just thought he was like okay, but they listened to more and more of his stuff and like you know warmed up to him a little bit and they really started fucking with him. And now he's like in the collective and I'm be real. He Asidica's so good. I'm like actually disappointed that I've not made more shit with him. He is. I will say he is incredibly busy. Like, Asidica, I, I think, like, Asidica, like, has to help, like, help his mom pay rent and stuff, mm-hmm. right? So he's, like, always working, and he still has, like, school. And on top of that, he's working on an album that should be dropping soon. Uh, at least, honestly, it might it might come out by the time this episode airs, right? But he, he's working on an album as as of the time of recording this. And I'm, I'm really excited for it. The shit I've heard from it is really good. And Payton has heard the album early. Only Payton, though. Like, mm-hmm. literally no one else. And he says it's incredible. And I'm, I'm really excited for it. Yeah, I, I need to actually listen to their stuff. Because I always see y'all post about it. And I just haven't, like, tapped in yet. But I definitely will after this. You gotta. It's so good. But I, I was saying this before. I, I veered a little off track. But Jake, like, ultimately, Jake has to like an artist for it to get in. Everyone else can like it if Jake doesn't. Uh, they're not in because mm-hmm. obviously well a he owns the collective but b jake has a really good sense of like knowing like who will mesh well with each other like he a, a thing for him like and a lot like of the music he listens to just in general is he has to not only like the music but like for a lot of his favorite artists has to have like a personal connection with them on some sort of level and that especially carries over when putting new people into the collective. Like, Jake has to, like, seriously vibe with them and, you know, get, like, 
the feel of them, like, you know, them fitting into their friend group, like, and he has a really good sense of that. So, shout out Jaquan Drive and the Island Collective. Yeah, and I guess my last question that I have is, as it comes to a close, is there anything else you'd like to give a shout out to? I- I've shouted out so many people, but I'm going to go through ev- all of them, right? Shout out Jake Payton and everyone in the Island Collective. Like, y'all are awesome. Thank y'all. Shout out to Ash and Soul Stars and like everyone in that. Y'all, I, I, I love my friends way too much, man. I have so many, like, I'm so glad I have so many people with me and so many people supporting me because years ago I didn't have that. So, like, I'm really grateful I found like a circle that I can finally, like, you know, relax into. Like, mm-hmm. you know, I, I can finally be myself yeah. and feel at home with, right? Shout out to uh, TJRA, shout out Kate Dash, shout out Exophilo. I mean, they're already in. They're already in Souls. They're already a Souls person, but, like, especially shout out to her. We've been friends for, like, fucking years, and, like, we've been through shit together. Like, mo- like Morgan would know, man. Like, <laughs> shout out all my friends. Shout out everyone I fucked with. Shout out a- anyone I made a song with and I still talk to. And shout out to people I've made songs with in the past and I talk to occasionally. I need to reconnect with y'all. I will soon, right? Shout out, shout out everyone, man. I love everyone. <laughs> yeah, and shout out Ghosty for being on today's interview. This was really Thank fun. Thank you. And shout out you for being getting me on this interview. It's been long overdue. Long I'm overdue, so grateful. but it was definitely you the worth goat, it. man. Yes, you the goat for yeah, real, thank man. You. Yeah, and hopefully, I'm really hoping that the audio like turns out fine for this one because we figured out the solution. But we'll have to like see after. But yeah, this has been the Hidden Driveway Show. Uh, this is Ghosty. All the music's gonna be down in the link, like in whoa. <laughs> all their, <laughs> all their socials Links will be, be in the in bio. link. Link in description. Go listen to it. Yes. If I have to, you have to. Yes. Yes. Dude, I need to figure out an actual outro still because they're like, I haven't made one yet. I kind of just like you. What episode is this? This is the fifth one. Damn. Uh, outro. This has been Hidden Driveway, y'all, and make sure to. Park that subscribe button in the hidden driveway. You hurry here first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Bye. Bye.